Uh, just got Secret Passage PTSD from Hearthstone. It's probably why I feel that way. So, I think one way to think about it, Coffee, is that Hand Disruption has historically always been part of the Pokemon TCG, and it kind of always needs to be, because in Pokemon, almost more than like any other card game except maybe Yu-Gi-Oh!, you filter through your deck at like an alarming rate. Like You draw a lot of cards, there's a lot of draw power and consistency and tutoring built into the game, so if there were no way to disrupt your opponent's hand, then they would not be punished for just spending all their resources like immediately digging down through their deck and then just like, you know, shitting all over you basically because they just bury you in card advantage. The utility of red card is that it is a hand equalizer. Like going to three cards in hand in this game does not feel horrendous. In the paper TCG that would suck. Oh man, my voice is like... <laughs> can already feel like my voice fading on me. I'm a, a truly washed streamer. But, um... Going to three cards is not tremendously disadvantageous in this game, but what it does, in my opinion, is it punishes players for being overly ambitious with their draws, or trying to play, like, in a greedy playstyle where they try to squeeze the max value of every card that they could possibly play before they play it. So, imagine a situation, right, where your opponent is going first. One of the few advantages of going first is that you're going to see, in this game, is that you're going to see more of your cards before your opponent. So they get to go first and draw for turn. They play Professor Oak. They draw two more cards. And then they're sitting there, minus their opening basic Pokemon, with potentially seven cards in hand. Oh no, they played the Oak, so six cards in hand. And then they pass to you. They're already at an advantage, not just so much in terms of the number of cards in their hand, but how quickly they are moving through their deck. Because you only have a 20 card deck in this game, whoever gets to see like their win con first is typically the winner, so burning through your deck quickly is advantageous. Makes sense, right? If you play a red card in that position, you not only reduce your opponent's hand size back to 3, but they also played their Oak, and now they cannot play the Oak post-Red card to draw back out of the Red card. So, it punishes, like, early game digging when you may not necessarily have to, and it also comes up in, like, niche situations where this happened earlier in the stream. It's like, my opponent played a Sabrina, and I had to make a choice of what to promote to the active, with knowledge of my current hand, and I was like, oh, well I have a Voltorb, they can't kill the Voltorb, so if I play the Electrode onto it the next turn, I can just free retreat and get out of the active without spending any resources, which is optimal. But, if my opponent had the red card and they played it after the Sabrina, I have now made a decision based on what was in my hand, and then lost what was in my hand. So I could potentially get fucked if I don't draw a way to get Voltorb back out of the active after having made that decision. Um, another potential situation, and the reason I like the card a lot in um, Pikachu specifically, is because you have a hard time into the Poison matchup. They just trade very favorably into Pikachu, and you do not trade favorably into them. You, on average, have to hit them twice to get one point. They have to hit you twice to get two. So... That matchup is really hard. Under no circumstances can you one-shot Weezing. Unless, I guess, you use Thundering Hurricane and flip three heads, but that's not where you want to be. So, what's neat, and what can discourage your opponent, or what can, like, counteract your opponent from playing Koga on their Weezing, which is normally a really annoying and strong play, is that if they don't have the second Coughing in play, and they go to Koga the Weezing to their hand, they can bench the coughing, but they cannot evolve it to the wheezing in the same turn, which means the wheezing is stuck in their hand, and if you red card them, there's a pretty good chance that they're not getting their wheezing back. So there are niche situations where it comes up. I think for the card pool that we currently have in the game, red card is a fine card, and it's actually even stronger in tournament play, because tournament play is best of three open deck lists, which means at the start, both you and your opponent get to see the 20-card deck that your opponent is running, 
in order to verify that you are not cheating, right? Because, like, before I queue up to the game, I could just change cards in my deck, and, like, my opponent wouldn't know. <coughs> but by having open deck list, if there's anything that deviates during the course of three games from the deck list, then you know that your opponent is cheating. So it keeps everyone playing honest. But red card actually holds a lot of power if you play it under those conditions, because then your opponent definitively knows that you could have that card at any time. Like, the moment you have any cards in hand at all, one of those cards could be a red card, in which case your opponent has to play the entire game thinking that their hand may not be their hand during the next turn. Like, they could be planning a couple turns ahead, like, oh, okay, I'm gonna crack them here, then X-Speed, retreat, Sabrina, knock them out, and win the game that way. And if that's your game plan, and then all of a sudden your opponent red cards, you might lose, because you just lost what your entire game plan was. So, the fear of that, like, just the mental mind games of, like, oh, my opponent could red card me at any time, and I know that they have it definitively, like, it's in their deck as a card, makes you play in an almost suboptimal way, because now you have to deploy resources when you draw them, instead of when it is actually cor correct to play them. So, I don't know. I think it's a really interesting card. The community is kind of divided on it, and I kind of mentioned this in the video that I put out last night, but basically, half the people that play this game think red card is, like, a great card, and I think I fall into that camp for the most part. And half the people that play this game think that red card does nothing, and, like, it just gives your opponent a better hand half the time. Which is true, but I think it's a healthy card to have in the game. Like, having a card that can disrupt your opponent's hand, I think, is, like, integral to playing the Pokémon TCG at any level. So, I'd rather have it as an option in the game than not. <laughs> 